What's going on guys, Arrow here and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video, I want to talk to you guys more about Generation 9 with Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet, but I want to talk to you guys about my most wanted feature that I would love to see inside of these games. Now this is actually something that I've wanted to see in a Pokemon game for the longest time, and I really do feel like if they were ever going to do this, Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet would honestly be the perfect games to do this feature. And the reason that I'm saying that is because Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet are being advertised as open world Pokemon games. It says that in the very first like reveal tweet that we had for these games and even on the Pokemon website itself, it says that these are going to be open world Pokemon games and that towns and cities are basically going to seamlessly blend into one giant open world. Now what this means is that the entire world is already loaded and you can freely walk from one area to another area without having like a loading screen happen in the middle and to have to see the entire new area be loaded. You can just seamlessly walk from like one giant area to another and everything is just interconnected all into the world itself. Having an entire open world Pokemon game is something that I feel like fans have been asking for for the longest time so it's very exciting to see that finally happen with Pokemon Scarlet and Violet and I really do feel like with open world it's kind of cool how we've seen the Pokemon series kind of evolve throughout the couple years with the latest games that we've gotten. Pokemon Sword and Shield of course introduced the wild area which was like a very bare bones but kind of open area that allowed you to freely move the camera. And then we got Pokemon Legends Arceus, which was bigger open world areas, but they were still more segmented because you had like this one area, which would be like the Obsidian Fieldlands, but that would just be this one open area that you could explore. And then you had to go back and enter a new open area to go and visit something else. So it was very cool now to finally get to the point where it looks like the entire region is just going to be fully open and you can explore and go wherever you want. And it's because these are going to be the very first open world Pokemon games that I feel like these games would be the perfect ones to introduce this feature. Alright, so what is this feature that I'm talking about? It is having the ability to go to any town or city and challenging the gyms in any order that you wish with having the teams of the gym leaders be scaled to how many gym badges you currently have. Now this is a concept that I've wanted to see in a Pokemon game for the longest time. Every Pokemon game pretty much has you challenging 8 gym leaders around the region, collecting the 8 gym badges, and then finally challenging the Pokemon League, and then the champion. Now in every Pokemon game that we've had so far, pretty much all of the gym leaders are given to you in an order that you have to do assigned by the game itself, so like this is the first gym leader that you fight against, and then this is the second one, and that's pretty much how the game goes. Having an open world Pokemon game like this would be the perfect game to finally allow the player to choose exactly which gym they would like to challenge first and have the gym leaders be able to scale the Pokemon and the difficulty depending on how far you are with the amount of gym badges you already have. Now the Pokemon anime has already kind of confirmed that this does exist in the Pokemon world and that most of the time when you are battling a gym leader they aren't really using their full power against you and they're not going all out because they're really trying to scale it and make sure that you have a proper fight. Even in Pokemon Origins, which is like an anime based around Pokemon Red and Blue, when Red does get to Brock for the first time, he decides to use only these two low level Pokemon of Geodude and Onix because Red has no gym badges, but we can clearly see that he has a bunch of other Pokemon that he could have also chosen from. Now because Pokemon Scarlet and Violet are going to be open world Pokemon games, they would be the absolute best games to introduce this concept into the Pokemon series of giving you the ability to go to whatever town or city that you want and be able to challenge whatever gym you feel like going to instead of having a pre-assigned path that the game already gives you. Now in order to give you an idea for exactly how this would work, let's use the Kanto region as an example because I feel like the Kanto region is definitely a region that everybody has played at least once or is kind of familiar with it so it's easy to kind of give you an idea for exactly how to visualize this. So let's pretend like the Kanto region is an entire open world and you can freely go wherever you want within the Kanto region. So after you've received your starter Pokemon from Professor Oak in Pallet Town, you now have the ability to go to any city or town that you desire in the Kanto region because everything is interconnected, it's an open world, and you can go to any gym that you want. So for example, let's use one of my favorite gym leaders from Kanto, Sabrina. If we decide to go to Sabrina right away in Saffron City after leaving Pallet Town, if we make her our first gym leader, she's probably going to use very low level Pokemon against us, like a level 10 Drowsy for example. Her ace is probably going to be like a level 14 Kadabra or something because we currently have no gym badges. 
But if we decided to battle Sabrina after having like 7 gym badges and beating all the other gym leaders, now she would be able to use even more of her power so her team would probably have like a Hypno, an Alakazam, an Executor, and other very powerful psychic Pokemon. It would just be so cool to have something like this in a Pokemon game, even with some of the other gym leaders like Erika and Misty, if we decided to go to them first, they would probably use low level Pokemon for their typings, but if we decided to go to them after having more badges, they would use more powerful Pokemon. And this also wouldn't be like an insanely difficult thing to develop, there would be 8 gym leaders, you could battle them in 8 different orders, so 8 times 8 would be 64, they would have to make 64 different configurations for each of the gym leader teams, and that wouldn't be super difficult either, they would just have to kind of change what moves they have access to, the different Pokemon that they have access to, and tweak the levels a little bit, it's not like insanely hard and a whole bunch of time consuming things that they would have to do, but it would just be insane to see. What's even cooler is that there's already a fan-made Pokemon game that does this already called Pokemon Crystal Clear. Pokemon Crystal Clear is probably one of the coolest fan-made Pokemon games that I've seen in a really long time, and it's basically Pokemon Crystal made on the Gen 2 engine, but an entire open world where you have the freedom to go wherever you want, and because of that, the gym leaders scale to how many badges you currently have, and it's just really cool to see all of the different teams that the gym leaders use, and it's just a ton of fun. Now if a fan made project could pull this off, I would love to see what an entire professional studio like Game Freak could do with an entire game like this in HD on the Nintendo Switch, it would just be really insane. Now one of the things you may be thinking is how would the story work in a Pokemon game if it was open like this and you could go to any gym that you want, because sometimes Pokemon games of course do have like the story that happens with like the evil team and everything, so how would those types of events play out? Now for this, I feel like they would just base the game around how many gym badges you currently have. A lot of times these events are like triggered once you get out of like the third gym or like the fourth gym and that's when the evil team starts doing stuff and you have to help your rival or whatever. I feel like they would just base the game so like whatever your third gym decides to be, like wherever you are in whichever city, that's when like the evil team will attack or whatever and do like the thing. So it'll trigger the event that way and it won't really matter where you are in the region and that's how you're still going to be able to get the entire experience of the evil team and the story and everything also. Now the trainers on the routes throughout the region would also need to have some gym badge scaling. So like in the Kanto example, if we decided to go to Saffron City right away, all of the trainers that we would run into on the routes would use very low level Pokemon because we don't have any gym badges. That way we don't have to worry about running into a battle in an area where somebody starts sending out level 50 Pokemon. Now the last two things that I want to talk about are just why this would be such an amazing idea to have in a Pokemon game. The first reason is that this would make every single player's entire experience with this Pokemon game completely unique to them. If we use the Kanto example again, if I decided to go to Sabrina first, if my friend decided to go to Lieutenant Surge first, if somebody else decided to go to Blaine first, everybody's entire adventure and path would be completely unique to them depending on what they decided to choose instead of having like a set path that the game already gives you like we pretty much had with every Pokemon game. And then the other reason would just be the replayability. If you can choose any gym leader to go to first and then choose whatever gym leader you want after, that means every time you replay the game, you can choose a different path and there's like thousands of different combinations that you can do to see exactly what Pokemon a gym leader would use depending on when you decide to fight them and what attacks they would have, it would just be really crazy. And it's because of this aspect that a game like Breath of the Wild has so much replayability because Breath of the Wild also allows you to choose what path you want to do in terms of how you want to face against the Divine Beast. So like when I play Breath of the Wild for example, the path that I decided to do was the elephant and then the bird and then the lizard and then the camel. But you could go in any path that you want. Like you could do camel, elephant, lizard, bird. You could do lizard, camel, elephant, bird. Like there's so many different paths and that's what makes replaying this game so much fun. Now I have absolutely zero faith that this is going to happen in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. I don't see Game Freak doing this at all, but I guess I will just continue kind of dreaming of this because I really do think that if this did happen in a Pokemon game, it would just be really insane. And I guess it's still possible that we may see it in terms of future fan games because it was really cool to see it happen in there and maybe it's possible that we could see it more but just having something like this in terms of a mainline Pokemon game would just be so cool in my opinion and especially with Pokemon Scarlet and Violet being the very first open world Pokemon games they would be the very perfect games to introduce this but I am like 1 million percent sure that it's not going to happen that's why I even titled the video a feature that Game Freak won't do. But yeah, there you go guys, that is pretty much my most wanted feature that I would ever want to see in a Pokemon game, but I'm pretty sure it will never happen. If you guys enjoyed this video, then definitely be sure to click that like button, 
and also comment down below and let me know what you guys think of this. How would you guys feel if this feature was added into a Pokemon game? Would you like it? Would you not like it? Definitely be sure to comment down below and let me know. If you're new to this channel, then please be sure to subscribe. I'm definitely going to have some more Pokemon content in the future, so definitely be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on that. Click on that bell to become a part of the notification squad. Go follow me on Twitter at ActualArrow so you can be featured in videos, and also join my Discord server as well. We've got a bunch of people in there who are always talking about Pokemon and Smash Bros and Nintendo, so definitely be sure to join that. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching.